All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's Heroes Connect Military to Manufacturing event. Let me first introduce myself since I'll be moderating today's event. My name is Katie Bowerman and I'm a Senior Program Manager with the Manufacturing Institute. I oversee two of our Heroes Make America Skill Bridge training programs that are 100% virtual, um, as well as moderate our virtual events like this and other events that we hold. So we're here today talking with a very well-known company. They often come to my front door, uh, that is actively seeking military talent. Although the title of this event is Military to Manufacturing, the industry cannot function without its supply chain and distribution side of the house. Someone has to move all those products being made to consumers like ourselves. So as you can see here today, we're featuring one of our Heroes Make America supporter companies, Amazon. Huge company. I'm excited to have you all learn more about this company and how they could potentially be part of your next chapter in your career. Before I introduce our first speaker, I do want to cover some guidelines just to make sure we're on the same page. So you've got the notice this is being recorded. And with that, just please stay muted throughout the presentation so we have a nice clean recording on the on the back end, right? But I do encourage you to be an active participant. So what does that mean? Utilize the chat feature, okay? So if you have questions throughout the presentation, throw it in the chat box. Don't wait till the end. Just put it in there. We'll have a Q&A session after they present. And so I'll pull up those questions and we'll kind of go through them. I'll also allow you guys to come on live at that point to ask your questions of these experts, okay? So let's practice that chat box. So pull it up. What I want you to do is drop in where you're going to be job searching. So if you know a specific city, state, region, state in general, right? So just drop in um, where you're looking, maybe drop in if you have specific positions that you're looking for, go ahead and utilize that chat, chat box now. So while you're doing that, I want to briefly highlight our program. So the Heroes Make America Military Skill Bridge Program. We have a lot of our current students on this call, but we have other folks that join from the community, maybe other active duty service members, transitioning spouses, whatever it might be. So for those of you who are not familiar with Heroes Make America, we are a DOD approved skill bridge training program um, for transitioning service members, veterans, guard, reserve, mill spouses, and we provide a variety of certification trainings equipping you for rewarding careers in the manufacturing and supply chain industries. So our students learn a variety of things like safety, quality practices, technical trainings like electrical, mechanical, and pneumatic training, and then also, of course, our logistics and warehousing distribution side of the house. So you can see here our program managers and the trainings that we offer, so the three training tracks, as well as upcoming class dates that will be um, We've already started our first ones of the year, so these are going to be our second cohorts of the year. So we will drop in our contact information, so please feel free to connect with us on LinkedIn and ask us questions, or you can email heroes at nam.org. All right, we are a dynamic program. Heroes Make America does a lot of things. We don't just have a skill bridge training program. We also host a variety of virtual events and in-person events um, to include things like these weekly Heroes Connect events. We have a veteran learning series, and we also do quarterly virtual career fairs. Um, we will drop in the upcoming links and registration dates and all that kind of good stuff in the chat box for you to check out. Um, registration has gone live for our upcoming virtual career fair on February 22nd, 23rd, February 23rd. It is coming up a little over two weeks. Um, so please dust off those resumes, get registered, upload that resume as part of your registration process because those do go directly to the registered employers, okay? Um, our most up-to-date list of employers is going to be on the event website, so keep an eye on that. We have 18 right now. We'll add more over the next two, two weeks. Um, so yeah, so we'll drop that in. Join us on February 23rd, so go ahead and register for that event. So without further ado, I want to move on to our main event. Let's get started with uh, our first speaker from Amazon. So I have Amber Thompson, sourcing recruiter for military talent acquisition at Amazon. So Amber, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Katie. I'm so excited to be here today. Um, so like she said, my name is Amber. I am a sourcing recruiter for our North America talent acquisition team. Uh, specifically, I recruit for our non-exempt roles nationwide, which we will cover those a little bit further um, into the presentation. So just a little bit of background on myself, my Amazon journey. Um, I currently live in Virginia Beach, Virginia with my husband and three sons. So hashtag boy mom. Uh, I recently returned from maternity leave and have been with Amazon for a total of three years, um, all on the military hiring team. And then prior to my time here, I worked in the staffing industry um, for about five years and then four years property management. So super passionate about military hiring here at Amazon. Um, and a lot of that really stems from growing up, you know, surrounded by the military. My dad served for over 30 years. My husband served in the army for nine years. 
Um, and I find myself more often than not saying, I wish I knew then what I know now regarding his transition. Uh, as he got out of the military, he really didn't know where to start, how to translate his military experience um, into a civilian resume, or kind of what was next for him. Uh, I'm sure you all are aware, but companies have a tendency to overlook you know, transferable skills from military candidates because they may not match that corporate nom nomenclature. Um, so that's why it's important to have teams in place like ours to kind of bridge those gaps. So fun fact, my husband um, actually is a dual Amazonian like myself now. So after the army, he actually went into law enforcement for about five years and just kind of realized that, you know, wasn't the path for him, didn't, wasn't what he wanted to do, um, you know, for the rest of his life. So obviously I started chatting and I was like, wait a second, there's so many jobs at Amazon that match your skill set. Um, and so he's actually been with Amazon for a little bit over two years now in the loss prevention field. Um, so again, it ended up all coming full circle. And again, just why I love what I do. I'm um, super excited to kind of go over some of our open uh, positions that we have now. So I will pass it over to my partner, Kim. Thanks so much, Amber. Um, well, obviously, I am also part of the same team as Amber here at Amazon. Uh, I am a military recruiter and also a military spouse. My husband is still serving in the Army National Guard in Kansas. And I know there's quite a few of you on from Kansas, as I saw in the chat. So um, go Chiefs. Just going to say it because, you know, we should. Um, but uh, I've been with Amazon for two years. Prior to that, I worked at Zillow, uh, Discover, and a very large senior living facility um, that is operates nationwide, uh, doing recruiting in all of those spaces. But I will say Amazon has been the most fun, uh, most purposeful, uh, because I get to give back to the military community. I also grew up um, an Air Force brat, and so it's really neat to um, have this still be a part of my life and be able to give back um, as I watched my dad go through that transition. Um, but he was definitely ready to retire. So not as um, not what I get to do now, which is help um, find careers. So it's, yeah, I'm excited to be here. I'm glad we can chat today. We'll go ahead and go to the next one. And I think Amber will take it over. Perfect. Yeah, so this is just a, a little bit about our Joining Forces Pledge, um, which many of you may have heard of, but Amazon made its initial Joining Forces Pledge in 2016 to hire 25,000 veterans and military spouses by 2021. And after far exceeding this goal, um, a new goal was put into place to hire 100,000 veterans by, and military spouses by 2024. Um, and we have already hit that goal. I think a, a big announcement or video is going to be coming out soon. Um, but these pledges just continue to shine a light on the value in hiring veterans, which we continue to see today. Um, and although much progress has been made, um, this momentum will not continue without a focused veteran recruitment effort. So again, you know, just why teams in place like ours and what you guys are going through are just so important. Yeah, absolutely. And there's multiple teams that work on uh, military hiring initiatives. Ours is not uh, the only. We tend to deal with all the non-tech space. Um, but then there is a tech side, and then there's also a global team um, for those that are um, wanting to be overseas. So it's pretty awesome, the, the commitment that Amazon has made, and that we're a big part of it. Yep. Awesome. If you want to go to next slide, we will kind of go over some of the current opportunities. Um, so these are going to be our hourly opportunities. I will cover a couple of these, and I'll flip it over to Kim. So first and foremost, um, on-site medical representative. I don't know if you guys have heard of this role, but um, I know a lot of times when, like, you know, Katie said, when you think of Amazon, you think maybe you're just working in a fulfillment center, you're just, you know, shipping packages. There is so much more that goes into it. Um, we have so many different roles that will take so many different backgrounds. Some are degree required, some are not. So most of the roles on this page are going to be um, no degree required. So we found, obviously, that a lot of the roles we previously covered um, you know, service members obviously are serving. They, you know, may get out of the military without their degree or they may still be working towards that. So again, um, these roles do not quite require a degree. So first one, again, on-site medical representative, really any type of medical background works for this role as long as you have six months in the medical field. Um, so again, if you're coming from the military, you know, combat medic, if maybe you didn't have any medical experience from the military, you know, as a combat medic, but got out and we're a firefighter or a nurse practitioner, things like that. 
again, just six months, the main requirements are just going to be the first aid, CPR, and AED requirement, or if you have an EMT or NREMT, that will suffice as well. Um, and these roles do provide relocation assistance. I know obviously coming from the military, um, been relocating probably your whole careers, you may not want to relocate, um, but that is something that we do include. And then next up, we have our safety specialists. So these are gonna be environmental health and safety specialists. Um, you may see that title or just warehouse safety specialists online. Biggest thing here is just having one year of any type of safety background. So again, it could be in environmental health and safety. It could be, I served as a firefighter. Um, again, coming from the military, obviously that experience is probably already gonna, already gonna be there. And this one as well does not require a degree. And then our IT support engineer. So again, so many different roles, but this one is gonna be more of the like network engineering, troubleshooting, um, data cabling and systems administration background. This one does sit out of a fulfillment center, but you basically are supporting, um, you know, the other partners on site with kind of any IT related issues. And then really the only requirement here is just two years of experience, you know, with networking concepts. Biggest thing they like to see is just kind of systems administration background, no help desk. Um, so again, if you are interested in more of like the IT route, this is a great role to kind of get your foot in the door. And then um, last one I will cover before I kick it over to Kim is the mechatronics apprenticeship. So I know in speaking with Katie, that is something that uh, most of you are very familiar with is the mechatronics field. We do offer the apprenticeship opportunity. Um, so again, biggest thing with this one is that you are able to attend 12 weeks of schooling um, out of state. Typically the school, they pick from about five different ones. Um, and that would be kind of announced, you know, during the interview and offer process. But again, with this one, just any type of mechanical, technical background, and then just a high school diploma is really the, the main requirements. So a lot of great opportunities. Um, I will kick it over to Kim to kind of go over our transportation. Awesome. Appreciate that. And I just want to preface, this isn't all that our team does. It's all that we have available. So we wanted to highlight it now. Uh, so we are actively recruiting for these roles right now. Um, and that's why, again, they're here. There are other profiles um, that might be coming down in, as the year progresses, um, but I just wanted to reiterate, this is what um, we're actively working. Um, so transportation specialist, and this one um, we have been requested to um, assist, so you won't see it posted yet because we are fine tuning location and, and number of headcount. Um, but this one is very specific to Tempe, Arizona. So unless you're already in that area, uh, we don't offer relocation, um, but if you have any colleagues or this one's definitely open to military spouses as well, um, it has a hybrid schedule um, where you work three three days in office and two days at home, just requires um, a high school diploma. But it really, what this role boils down to is like a customer service help desk for our drivers. So that's our delivery drivers, our line haul drivers. Uh, and line haul, we'll talk about in a minute because that's the next role, but you would be helping them um, if their scanner isn't working when they're delivering packages, you would then notate that the package has been delivered, their truck breaks down, if they get in an accident, you have this entire manual of things to help um, guide you through those conversations and then escalate as needed. So um, again, really easy way to remember it, customer service for drivers. Uh, the transportation associate role, however, um, there's a couple different things that you need. So high school diploma, but you have to be 21 years um, with a dr active driver's license, doesn't matter what state it's in. Um, but this is an actual paid CDL training program uh, that is a permanent Amazon role. Um, so we are bringing in-house all of our regional routes or what we call line haul. Uh, and so we will pay you um, and, and get you through a CDL training program. And then we will use you for one of three things as a transportation associate. You'll work Part of your shift at the guard shack, checking in and out trucks that are coming into what we call our yard, which is the whole gated community of an Amazon fulfillment center. Um, and then you will work, um, uh, some people like to call it a yard jockey. So for those in logistics, you might understand what that means when you're moving equipment from one place to another within your same location. Uh, so you would be taking trailers and dropping them at dock doors to get loaded and unloaded, um, and then moving them back out for the next load to go into the next trailer. And so kind of a um, rinse and repeat of mo that movement throughout your shift. And then the line haul. Uh, we are bringing in-house our regional routes. So that's 150 miles distance from one fulfillment center to another. 
You are not delivering packages to customers' doors. You are taking freight from one of our sites to another one of our sites, and then maybe picking up freight and bringing it back. Your entire 10-hour um, shift may be utilized to do those line hauls or may be utilized to do a little bit of everything that I just mentioned. Um, but what's really great is that we will train you up. And if you've already had um, have a military license um, to drive the, the larger scale vehicles, um, we can actually get you a CDL very quickly through a written test, as long as you um, had that and uh, within the last year, or you just got out of the service within the last year. So a really quick um, increase to that. This role specifically, again, no relocation available, but it is open in many locations across the U.S. right now and more. We've already been tasked today um, and have a new list for Q2 hiring. Um, so this is something that we are definitely supporting throughout the year and new sites are added frequently. Um, so if you're interested in earning your CDL outside of the military, great opportunity for you. And then it's another foot in the door. I always like to highlight this. And Amber, you can probably agree with me, but like it's a foot in the door at Amazon. Uh, any one of these roles, but it is not usually where you stay if that's not where you want to stay. It's just, again, a really cool opportunity to get in, see how things work at Amazon, and then find your next endeavor at Amazon. That's just how we do things. So yeah, next slide. Yeah, and just to, uh, again, go off of what Kim was saying there, um, sometimes I know a lot of people may apply to popular locations and it's just really hard to kind of get your foot in the door. I will say like, once you have your foot in the door here, the opportunities are endless to move around. You start to kind of build connections and you know, as you work maybe within the fulfillment center, you start to talk to other teams and you know, different roles and people move around a ton. Um, obviously, you know, they've done maybe a year in safety. They're like, hey, I actually really wanna get into more of the operations side and um, again, like Kim said, just if you take anything away from this, just getting your foot in the door um, is going to really open up opportunities. Yeah. And for any of you non-degree holders, getting your foot in the door waives the requirement of education down the road. And so that is we can promote from within without a degree, but we can't hire externally without a degree. So something to consider as well. Yes. And you'll see um, it may like a lot of our job descriptions or requirements online. It'll say like degree required or two years of Amazon, you know, blue badge experience. So that's what Kim is referring to there. So if you get in without a degree, you work here two years and then you want to apply for, you know, an operations manager that may require the degree, that door is open right there for you. Yeah. We're all entrepreneurs in Amazon. So your career <laughs> is yours to own. Yes. <laughs> so I, again, we'll cover just a couple of these roles and then I'll flip it over to Kim. Um, so our area and operations managers, those are um, basically what our team kind of started out recruiting on when the military recruiting team was formed. So the area managers lead and are directly responsible for their own team of up to 100 Amazon associates. Um, they basically will cover different areas within the fulfillment center. So whether it be inbound, outbound, um, really what you need for this role is just a passion and background in motivating, mentoring, coaching, um, you know, coaching a team that is all going to be essential. And obviously coming from the military, like the leadership experience is already there. So like I said, you know, you don't have to have a, a background in, you know, supply chain to be able to come in and be an area manager. If you have that, that passion for leading and motivating, that's really, you know, the biggest thing here. Um, and then again, area managers just drive and lead process improvement initiatives within the fulfillment setting, um, while also maintaining the, the high levels of safety, quality, and engagement within their teams. Um, these roles do require a bachelor's degree, or again, if you come in and get that two years of the Amazon experience under your belt. Um, and then as far as just like shift schedules, I know that's always a big question as well. Most of the roles within the fulfillment center are going to be um, on flexible scheduling. So typically what we see are like front and back half, day and night shifts. So typically it could be like Sunday to Wednesday, Wednesday to Saturday. Um, again, shifts can change, but that's just kind of to give an idea of what those look like. Um, and then right now we've got over 40 different locations within North America that we are recruiting for, um, and we're getting more and more each day. So if you do have a location you're interested in and you may not see it just yet, keep checking the job boards, you know, find us on LinkedIn. Um, all of those links will kind of be dropped um, towards the end. And then um, with that, the operations manager is kind of our leader of leaders. So these roles are responsible for up to seven area managers. So again, when you think of area managers, they're going to be in charge of, you know, up to 100, you know, Amazon associates. The operations manager will then lead the area managers. So again, just that passion, 
that background and leadership, mentoring, those are the biggest things. Um, and then again, with the operations manager, a degree is also required. Um, and then obviously just the MBA is a preferred requirement, uh, or excuse me, preferred qualification, but not a requirement. And then next we have our site and uh, environmental health and safety manager. Again, you may see this as a warehouse safety manager online. Um, I know we went over the safety specialist role, so those will fall under the safety manager. Um, really just responsible for site execution of all applicable safety standards um, to include local and regional regulations. And then again, just biggest thing here they're looking for is up to three years of increasing responsibility um, within the warehouse safety or environmental programs. Right now, it does say a degree is required. This is a new requirement. Um, I will say never say never. We are working through, you know, maybe taking military experience in lieu of a degree. Um, but again, right now, this one does require a degree. And then uh, lastly, I'll just flip over to our pathways program. So I'm not sure, this is a, a very popular program within Amazon. You may see it um, on LinkedIn a lot if you were on there, but essentially this is a, a leadership development program where they leverage your military expertise um, into diverse experiences, you know, while learning how to manage people, processes, and technology. Um, it's a four-step program. So typically you'll come in, you'll start as an area manager, you'll then work up to an operations manager, then promote into a senior operations manager, and then obviously graduate the program. So this is definitely a highly sought after pathway in Amazon, um, and it does fill up very quickly. So I know right now, Kim did list on here that our fiscal year 24 is full, um, but again, we expect to get more into next year. So again, just keep an eye out on LinkedIn or the amazon.jobs page, um, and we will go into that further into the slides, kind of how to navigate those pages. But I will flip it over to Kim for our other roles. Awesome. Thanks so much. Yeah, that military pathways is very competitive. Um, and so you're going to want to make sure that you get all the basic requirements. Uh, you have to be within that one year of your transition from the military. So if you're outside of that, there is no wiggle room there. Um, but yeah, so look for those. We'll open kind of September, October-ish. We'll hold some information sessions. So you can look for that if you're within that criteria. But I'll move on to the senior customer success manager. Uh, this is kind of like a data analyst role. Um, and the reason I say that is because uh, this role does require a bachelor's degree um, and then an understanding. And I will say that, I know it says four plus years in buying merchandise and in planning, but if you've done anything with supply chain and understanding how much you need to have in order to meet the expectation or or provide for the, the, the plan that you have, then that meets um, what we would need you to understand for this role. Uh, and then the negotiating and growing customer relationships comes into play because you are actually supporting our vendors and sellers uh, who are selling their products using our amazon.com platform, which we're all very familiar with that, right? I mean, I'm pretty sure we probably all use it every day. So in the backside, of that process, we've got these vendors that are selling their products and then everybody loves Prime Day, right? So the senior customer success uh, managers are the ones that are coming up with a strategy for pricing according to how much product we have and where it's located. And so where should we run those deals? Should we have coupons, all of that? And you're using data to tell that story to your vendor and convince them. So they're gonna give you their data with they show how well their product has sold with us before or with others before. And you're gonna take our internal data about their sales and you're gonna kind of mesh those together and come up with a strategy. Um, so very data analytics, it's very competitive as well. And it does require you to be in the Austin, Arlington, Santa Monica, New York City, or Seattle locations. There are no wiggle room with that. Um, and But we do offer relocation, so that's great as well. Um, so that's the Senior Customer Success Manager. I'm partial to it, I hired it when I first started Amazon. So. I think it's a cool role, um, but it's not for everybody. If you don't love data, this is not for you. If you don't love Excel, this is not for you. Um, the program managers, again, highly sought after role. Um, and I understand that the military is great at encouraging PMPs, um, project management programs. Um, this does require a bachelor's degree. And for any of the senior designated, an MBA is really, um, it's not required, but it definitely is preferred. And so if there's candidates that have it um, and others that don't, um, it may it may make the difference, right? But again, this is another data analytic type of role because you are trying to see what is broken and how do we fix it in a in a case of creating a new process, creating a new um, strategy to solve a problem at Amazon. 
And so you'll be working with a bunch of um, other teams, especially like our AWS teams who are creating new um, fixes for whatever the, the problem is. And so it's about end-to-end -end delivery. So working backwards at Amazon, that's what we do. And so this role really looks at that backwards. When do we need it to be fixed by? When do we need that outcome by? And we work backwards to come up with a plan and then execute that plan. So um, again, highly sought after role. We don't have any right now um, that our team personally owns. You'll probably find plenty online, um, but our team doesn't personally own any. So they're not completely dedicated to military hiring, but um, but we do expect our team to have some here in the near future. So we're working very closely with our industry partners to make that happen. So I think next slide, we'll talk about how to find out what we recruit for and what our whole process looks like. Um, and so Amber, do you wanna take this one? Sure. Okay. So um, we'll have some some screenshots, I believe on the next slide, just to kind of show you like what the amazon.jobs page looks like. Um, and then we do have specific links that go directly to the ones that our team, you know, hires for. So it'll typically say like military veterans encouraged to apply in parentheses. Um, that just means that our team owns those. You know, you can obviously apply to any requisition, um, but, you know, you'll see area manager and then you'll see area manager, military, you know, and for the example, student veterans encouraged to apply. Um, so what you'll do, obviously, when you do apply, um, a lot of the roles may have an assessment that is triggered upon application. So a lot of times I'll talk to candidates on, you know, LinkedIn, they'll say, hey, I applied, I don't see it in there. Um, and then I'll follow back up with them. And your application is not complete um, until you've actually taken the follow on assessment if the rule does require that. So it'll it won't show in our system until you've actually taken that assessment. So I would just keep an eye out. Um, again, most of our jobs do require an assessment and, you know, typically it's just a, a soft skills or kind of functional skill assessment. And then from there, some of them also do require a phone screen. So you may apply, take the assessment, and then I would reach out to you and be like, hey, you know, your background looks great for this role. We'd love to move forward with you. Um, I'm moving you to the next step, which would be a phone screen with one of our operations leaders. And then from there, you know, if the role obviously did require a phone screen and you pass that step, you would be moved to the interview loop. Um, right now, most of our roles, again, are still going to be virtual. Obviously, um, ever since COVID, a lot of things have just gone virtual and it's worked. Um, this helps, obviously, with candidates that may not be in the specific location at the time. Um, but typically what our interview loops consist of is meeting with multiple leaders, whether that be, you know, human resources, operations, program manager, whatever the case is. Um, and with those, you'll meet one on one with each leader. So a lot of times Amazon interviews is a, a couple hour long process. Um, so I know when I came into Amazon, I actually met with five different um, people to join the team. And again, it's just a, a 45 minute interview with each person. Um, so that's typically what it looks like. Again, this will vary from, you know, role to role. Uh, Kim, I don't know if there's anything you wanted to add in there. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify one thing is that our roles are not virtual. Our interviews are virtual. <laughs> so I just wanted to clarify that real quick. Um, and then also the um, interview loops for the hourly associates tend to be way less than the four to five. Uh, interviewers. So maybe even just like a lot of my roles, transportation associate and specialist are one interview and, and you're done. So one one hour interview. Uh, so it all depends on the level of the role and um, experience needed for the role and what you can expect. Operations manager, there's going to be five. And then there's also going to be a writing assessment or four and then a writing assessment. So, um, you know, we're, we have different things that are needed for all of that. Um, but your recruiter will walk you through all the expectations and keep you in the loop throughout the process. And then if you want to go to that next slide one more time, Katie, sure. um, I know, again, so just with this, uh, this screenshot here, this is what it will typically look like when you do search for a job. Um, mm -hmm. On the left side, you are able to kind of narrow down. So if you're looking for a certain field or you know, say, hey, I want something just within operations. I don't know what that is. Or I want something within human resources, but I'm not sure what role. Um, the tabs on the side are, are very user friendly. You can narrow down by just, hey, United States or, you know, specific states, specific fields, business lanes, um, you know, again, even our international roles. But I would just say, like, if there's, you know, specific area you're looking for or if you just want to keep it open, um, and then again, I know further in, we'll have some links that we'll drop in here um, that'll take you specifically to the military recruiting page. Yep, awesome. And then you can also use the term military. So if you were to put in operations military, 
and then maybe just the state that you could you, at the very top. I know we don't have it on the screen, but at the very top of our Amazon.jobs um, page, it asks for like keyword search and then and then area. You can absolutely put in military and the state that you're in, and and that designates that our team is is recruiting for that role, which means it's dedicated headcount traditionally for military talent. So we get like a small portion of the big pie of all the openings. And so that has been dedicated to uh, to that. So even if you're anybody is non-military, they still have a chance to get the role, um, but not that specific uh, one opening that we have. So it's pretty neat um, that we get to partner um, and dedicate hiring to veterans. Um, but other than that, yeah, it's really user-friendly and I, I challenge you to play around with it and, and understand it better. Then we also have the military skills translator um, that you can also, if you go to the amazon.job slash military page, um, that's where you can actually enter in your prior ranks, your degrees or non-degrees or your prior experiences, any certifications you have, and it'll spit out things that it thinks you're qualified for. Now that might not always be what you wanna do and that's, that's completely fine, but it gives you an idea or a starting point uh, on roles to look for at Amazon. Perfect. The next slide. Awesome. I'll go ahead and start on the top, and then you want to talk about um, the actual prep. Sure. How to get ready for it. Okay. So to apply for Amazon, I would I always highly recommend that you do it from our jobs page versus things like Indeed or LinkedIn. Uh, Indeed, first of all, is only going to shoot us off um, a message that you're interested in one of our openings. You're, it's not actually an application, and I think that that's forgotten uh, by a lot of our candidates. But the best thing that you can do is make sure that it is clearly notated on your resume that you're prior military, that you're a veteran, that you're a guards member, reservist, whatever the, whatever it is, we challenge you to put it on there because we use things called Boolean search strings to find you and filter out military talent. So if it's not on there, we might overlook your resume. I'm not saying we will, just saying we might. And we don't want to do that inadvertently. Um, and then I think the question was already posed, like, how do you format your resume? you don't format it like a GS job. You do not format it with all of your previous pay and time and service and, and time, you know all of that stuff. We, we don't want all of that on there. Um, you do format it in a, in a core, not as like what your typically typical day looks like in your job, but like how you have actioned things in your role, in your previous role. So we're going to talk at the end about the star format. I like to challenge candidates to use the star format when they're thinking of the bullets that they want to put in, into their resume. So describe a situation that you had at your job, a task or an action that you took, and the result so that we can clearly see the impact you've had in your previous role, not just what you did. Because we can Google your job title and, and figure out what that job entails. What I can't do is decipher how you how well you did that job just from what you tell me your daily activities were. Um, we are a data-driven company. And so for especially higher level roles, we definitely want to see data on your resume, uh, improved metrics, cost savings, those type of things. So if you're interested in area manager, operations manager, program manager, senior customer success manager, all of those are going to deal with data. Um, and so we definitely want to see that on your resume. So if you're using the star format, to create your bullets, then you should be able to have that result, right? And which means in the situation, you can also outline what the starting metric was. Like we missed this by so many basis points, but we improved by so many basis points, if that makes sense. So um, there's lots of Google searching that you can do to find out how to format your resume with Amazon. I would just keep it simple, but keep it clear and defined on what your part of your role at each company have been. <laughs> and I will, I will say not to, not to scare anybody away, but we want you to win the interview. Like me as a recruiter, yeah. I want to get you to the finish line. Yeah. So I will tell you, um, Amazon interviews are not ones that you can just typically wing it. Um, before I came to Amazon, I will tell you, I just thought, oh, I'm a people person. I could show up to the interview and I'm going to win the job. Um, you know, I can talk to people. This is easy. When I came to Amazon, I actually started as a contractor for about six months, six, seven months. Um, and when it was time to interview for my full time role, I mean, I prepped for like two weeks um, only because I knew my interview was two weeks away. But this is this is somewhere you definitely want to prepare for your interview. Um, when we say use the star to format your the star method to format your answers, um, it's really not a recommendation. It's more of a requirement. Um, this, you know, typically negatively impacts a lot of our candidates' interviews if they don't follow this format. 
Um, so again, I'm sure you've heard of it now. Again, we'll go over it a little bit further, but really just biggest takeaway here. If you do get an interview is just prepare. Um, think of like seven to 10 stories or examples of times you made an impact, whether it be in the military or, you know, whatever the case is. Um, check out the interviewing at Amazon landing page. And then the other biggest big thing here that you'll probably hear is our leadership principles. Um, our interviews are based on our leadership principles. So when I say that, we're not going to quiz you and say, hey, what are our leadership principles? We're going to ask you questions to see if you align with those leadership principles. So do you take ownership? Um, you know, do you drive results for the team? Can you hire and develop the best? So that's kind of like what we're looking for. So again, again, biggest takeaway, just prepare, prepare. Um, your recruiter typically will send out a good interview prep email. We also host interview prep office hours each week, um, twice a week. So that way you guys can kind of listen in. We want you to win the interview. Um, so again, just lean on all the support that is provided. It is shocking, Amber, how many of our candidates could probably very easily do the job, yep. but because they were not able to clearly articulate their experience at the level and scope that we would need it to be for that role, um, that missed the mark on that. And then, you know, unfortunately, it's probably a six month wait till you could be reconsidered for the role. And so um, taking the time to prepare, I again started as a contractor, just like Amber for this team, and again had to go through my four person interview. Um, and it took me forever to prepare, but I'm so glad that I did because it set me up for success. And I don't know very many companies that offer an interview prep session. Let's be honest. We take the time out of our very busy schedules to host those. Um, and so take advantage. Every recruiter at Amazon should be offering you the opportunity uh, to attend one. Uh, even if it's not our, our team, it is talked about very highly at Amazon that we understand we do things different. So we're going to set you up for success and give you the tools to succeed. Whether or not you take advantage is up to you. Um, and maybe you want to prove us wrong that you don't need an interview prep. That's, that's your choice to make. Um, but I think it's a risky one. And so always take the time if you have it available. Yes. So I, I awesome. used to be that way. So <laughs> I was um, always a winger. I'm like, oh, I can do this. I'm a, I'm a recruiter. Mm -hmm. I know what they're going to ask. No, no. Oh, I had some curveballs. That's for sure. <laughs> awesome. Next one. Oh, yay. It's everybody's favorite time. It's Q&A. This is where you all get a chance to pick our brains. All right. That was a wonderful presentation. So much information about the variety and jobs that are available, um, which is great because, again, we see that box come to our front door. We don't know all the <laughs> things that are behind the scenes to make that box get to my front door. Uh, lots of people involved. So now is our time, guys. I'm going to pull up the chat box. Um, I saw there were some questions. Uh, Kim, you had already, you know, kind of touched on the resume portion. Um, I do have a follow-up question to the application process, because this may be, as you know, a lot of our military are trying to plan out based off their transition timeline. What is the application to interview, to hire, kind of what is the best practice for that timeline? Oh, good question. I always say within 60 days. If you're available within 60 days, that's the time to start applying. We work on a as needed basis, meaning that role is posted because it's needed now. It's not needed six months from now, minus the military pathways. That one has flexibility uh, with start dates through the entire next year. I think usually like January to September. But outside of that, we have current needs. They need to be filled usually within that same quarter. So we work on a quarterly basis. We get new demand every quarter. And that's how a lot of our teams at Amazon operate. And so if you can't start, you know, say we posted a job in January, if you can't start by March, we're going to have to hold your application until um, we can we can try to fill it prior to that date. Perfect. So those those of you who are like, I need a job in a month, we're already past <laughs> the time. So make sure that you plan accordingly, which means mm -hmm. you got to prep ahead of that two months. Right. There's a whole thing that goes into this. So thank you for clarifying that for those who are a little closer to their timeline. Um, let's see here. Got a question in the chat box. Is there a requirement difference between area manager and area manager two? Um, and then as well as that, is it possible to come to an area manager two or do you have to start at one? Gotcha. Good question. Amber, you want to take that? Yeah, so we you may see, which I think one of our screenshots did have it on there, the uh, student veteran area manager opportunity. 
Um, Amazon is, is kind of similar to the military when you think of like, I don't want to call it rank structure, but with our leveling. So you'll see like an L2 and L3 and L4. Um, with that, you do not have to come in and start as a, an area manager one to move up to an area manager two. Um, the student veteran one that we had previously, uh, again, our team doesn't cover any right now, but you still obviously will see other ones online. Um, those ones, sometimes you can come in without the degree complete, like, hey, I'm going to have my degree within six months. Um, you can apply, interview, get the job offer, and then your degree essentially would just be complete by the time you started. The area manager too, obviously, if you just have a little bit more experience, um, that's, you know, what's going to kind of get you in the door with that role. So if that kind of makes sense, I don't know, Kim, if you wanted to add anything there. Yeah, I think the area manager one, which it's not typically posted that way, the difference is, is amount of experience that you'll see listed in the job description. It's a, usually only like one year of leadership experience versus three years for the area manager two. So that's really the difference between the two. But we have dedicated um, all of our area manager one openings to be students. So you have to be within a certain, I think it's a year and a half time frame of your graduation date for a bachelor's degree, not a certificate program or anything like that, but a bachelor's degree. Um, and we used to have dedicated headcount for, for veterans for that, but we just found it was really hard to align location and where they were currently doing their schooling and they didn't want to stay. It just, it became very difficult to find the right amount. Um, and so that's really the only difference between area manager one and two. And again, you have to be within that education requirement in order to be considered for area one, area manager one. Awesome. Thank you both for clarifying that. Um, let's see here. Another question regarding length. It's just a lot of resume questions to maybe yep. we, we talk about. So is, we talked about not a GS um, resume, right? A civilian resume. We typically teach a one to two page resume. Would you see that's pretty normal for the applicants uh, for Amazon to have a one to two page resume? Yes, please. Uh, you um, shouldn't need to put anything else outside of a few really strategic, we talked about that star formatting, right? Really strategic scenarios that you've encountered in that role that you've seen success and, and been able to, to do things well. You don't have, again, I think when we get into those multiple areas uh, or multiple, multiple pages of resumes, it's because you're trying to outline too many job duties, mm -hmm. like a job description. And so you can really do a much bigger, you know, impact on your resume if you're to hone into those very successful skills that you've brought to the table. Yeah, and just to touch on that, I can't remember I, I what the time I Googled it before, what the, the data is there, but where it shows like recruiters only spend a certain amount of seconds, um, you know, I mean, like when they're going through reviewing resumes. And so again, like if it's five pages long and the paragraphs, um, GS resumes, yeah, are a little difficult to read. I know obviously that's how they like them, but, um, but yeah, one to two pages, bullet points, like that is prime. Um, Amazon, a little yeah. pun there, no, <laughs> what we're looking yeah. for. Well, and I think that there's a, uh, been a really good switch and shift in resume um, expectations for a lot of employers, especially big ones like Amazon. We don't care what you did 15 years ago, so to speak, unless that job requires that much experience, right? We really want to um, hone in on relatable experience. Um, I'm not saying to cut things out of your resume because I don't want to see that either, but I'm just saying you don't have to list every job that you've had since you joined the military. I don't want you to list every single job that you have post-military if you've been out for more than 10 years, right? Like you you don't have to list all of that experience. We we actually say it in our interview prep, keep them keep your ex, um, experiences relatable um, and in real time. So meaning we're looking for the skill sets that are most recently available to you. Um, it's great if you did something 15 years ago, but what have you done since then that has the same impact? So just something to consider when creating your resume. Again, don't leave things off just to make room or to, to condense if they were relatable, um, but try not to try not to be too much, to add too much fluff to your resume. Quality over quantity, yes. most applicable. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, <clears throat> another question on resumes, because you said put on there if you're a veteran, put on there if you're military spouse. Is it sufficient just to put, you know, army veteran with blah, blah, blah experience, or does it need to be um, yep. anywhere else on there? Does not have to be listed as a job, especially if it's quite prior to now. You can just say, and maybe in your um, objective or in your, your first statement on your resume, army veteran, marine veteran, right? That's enough to pull from our Boolean search. 
perfect. And then let me see, I don't see any hands raised. So I will go ahead and prompt another question because um, I've gotten it in the past regarding the assessment. So two different questions. One, I couldn't find my assessment. Was it sent? Does it get stuck in the junk mail? So maybe let's talk on that. And then also how long does the assessment stay with them and can they retake it? Mm, good question. So typically you can log into your job profile and still see that it's pending, right? Um, but yes, it is also sent via email. And so sometimes you just need to check your spam, check your all, all of that. Um, and you can actually, I think you can type in assessment and it will, it will populate. Because um, I think that is what we say in the email to you when it, when it auto generates. Yeah, and I've actually found with candidates as well, which learning curve for me, um, we also have what we call like job specific questions and mm -hmm. knockout questions. So if there is a, a question that says, you know, can you work, I don't know, multiple shifts, night, weekends or holidays and you put no, then it may knock you out and it will not trigger the assessment. Correct. Um, or, you know, do you have a bachelor's degree and this role does require a degree and you put no, then it'll just knock your application out and it won't even trigger it. So that sometimes has happened. I had a candidate where they put no, but they actually did. So I kind of worked through looking through the, the responses and I'm like, oh no, can you just go back in and either withdraw your application and resubmit? Um, if you, you know, what we call, I guess, fail the assessment, not pass or not get the, the appropriate score, kind of what we're looking for. Um, typically you can retake it within, you know, six months for that job. You still can apply for other jobs that may require like a different assessment, um, but just for that specific, you know, same assessment, usually there's a waiting period. But if you're applying for the same job, it has the same assessment. So even if it's a different location, it will not prompt you to take a new assessment. It'll auto, probably auto reject um, within a few days, uh, your application. And, and there's a big, um, we're a big AI company and I completely understand why this fear is there, but AI is not kicking you out before we get to see your application. I know that's a very common um, misconception. Uh, we don't use artificial intelligence um, in our space to kick out resumes. It's those job screening questions. And I'm, I don't want you to lie on them because it does us no good if you lie on those questions. If we need somebody to have full availability, it's because we need you to have full availability to take any shift that is offered um, we cannot pick and choose shifts. There's just no way at the volume in which we hire. Um, I have 15 openings for one of my sites and it's first come first serve that gets the first pick at the, at the, um, the shifts available. Um, and so that is the, um, that is the norm at Amazon to have flexible scheduling and to know that down the road, that schedule might change to meet business needs. Um, and so we're very transparent, uh, when it comes to those questions. Now I've had plenty of people say no to that question and I will reach out and say, can you clarify? Because sometimes it's just like one thing that they're worried about. They're like, oh, I have an upcoming trip over that holiday. And so I said, no, because I'm going on a trip during that holiday. We can work on things like that. So you don't have to answer no for a very specific date that you have to say no to in the in the near future. Um, but all, overall nights and weekends, like like Amber had mentioned, we work ten, tend to have two different types of shifts. She called it front half and back half. So front half is Sunday through Wednesday back half is Wednesday through Saturday. So anything in operations is gonna require flexibility to work either of those. There are some that are Tuesday through Saturday. There are like, there's some fle flexibility with that, but again, it's all determined by business needs. Um, and I, I can't custom make a schedule that works around your availability. Yeah, and I know like Kim said, they can change. My husband started out um, in loss prevention. He started out on the night shift. He did a couple months of that and then they brought in, you know, another team member. He was able to switch to the day shift. And so again, it's just obviously, you know, dependent on, on team structure, site specific, what they need, but um, it doesn't mean you're going to be on night shift forever or, sure. Hey, you need this night off because you know, you have a trip coming up. So yeah. it's just being able to be flexible because obviously um, that's how Amazon gets the packages out the door so quickly and next day yep. shipping and all of that because um, of the people in place. Yeah. And then, and then same thing to be said for like, you know, there's so many unknowns when it comes to applying for a job, right? Like you might not even know exactly what site you're applying for. It might just say general area. And so um, I have a lot of candidates um, in Texas that are like, oh, I applied for this job and it's Dallas. Well, Dallas is a very huge metro, right? And so the job ended up being like an hour commute every day, and that's not going to work for you. So those are things that we're going to we're gonna talk about as you've applied to make sure that they're a good fit. Um, so just answer all those questions honestly, and then, and then we will review it. We do have a, a guaranteed to review your resume within 30 days. It's a metric that we're held. 
too. And so I know that's a really common question of how soon after I apply will I be contacted, right? Um, if you meet the basic qualifications and you pass the assessment, Amber and I are pretty darn quick. So is our entire team to get to you within 24 hours. Um, but if you answer no to some of those job screening questions and you get knocked out, we don't get a chance to talk to you. So. Yeah. And then, sorry, just one more caveat there, Katie, um, yeah. with that too, like popular locations. Um, so Texas obviously is very popular. And when I post like a Texas rec, I've got two in San Antonio right now. I mean, next day I've got like, you know, 50 plus applicants. And even though maybe all 50 are qualified, I can't move all 50 forward. Um, it's just not feasible. So typically I still will reach out and say, Hey, you know, the role has been filled. Um, however, would love to keep in touch or if there are alternate locations, so if you do put, again, one of those job screening questions we'll put is, are you open to relocation? What, you know, are your top five, top five preferred areas? And, you know, we'll still try and find you a home there. Or again, just keep in touch, keep you kind of keep you warm is what we call it. So um, that's just another reason I knew. I know sometimes people apply and they're like, I haven't heard anything and I'm qualified. Um, that could just be a reason. Yeah, agreed. All right, I have a question. It kind of stems from <clears throat> something that was in the chat. Say folks want to reach out to you to learn more about positions. Do you prefer that they have applied to a position already and then you talk about it, or are you and or are you open to um, like maybe they don't know exactly what position fits their needs? Are you open to having conversations before they apply? So I guess both. How do you feel about that as recruiters? I think um, I would prefer you already have applied because even if it's not my role. It helps me identify the recruiter that I can make an intro to. Um, but I cannot do that for everybody, right? Like I, I have a really cool post on my LinkedIn. It's actually highlighted at the very top that talks about like how to contact me and what to include in your messaging on LinkedIn. So I highly recommend everybody read that. Our team kind of lives that same mentality. You want to have your job description available. Are you open to relocate answer? Like tell me all these details ahead of time and I'll prioritize your message um, because that's what I need to be able to help you. Um, and so that's my take on it. I try, I mean, my goodness, we attend events virtually a lot. So we get a lot of, I mean, a lot of ads. I was just at Luke Air Force Base a couple of weeks ago and I have 150 new connections. Um, and so every single one of them sent me a message and it is going to take me a very long time to get back to everybody. So I can quickly go through and see somebody that included a job ID and that's where I'm gonna put my, my time and effort into. You're on mute. <laughs> we failed. I was, I was trying so We're hard. <laughs> um, just kind of like what Kim said, obviously, you know, if you send a resume, maybe you didn't apply. Um, that's kind of the, the preferred method is to apply. That way we can see what you're looking for. We can see kind of what your compensation requirements are, you know, what your background aligns with. If you just kind of blindly message on LinkedIn, hey, you know, I'm getting out next year. Um, what roles do you have available? That's kind of hard because I'm like, I, you know, I don't know your background without obviously going and looking at your LinkedIn profile or whatever the case is. Um, I'm more than happy if somebody wants to send a resume, you know, I can obviously, like Kim said, we get a lot of reach out. So it may take a little time just to get back to you, but, you know, we do want to help. Um, it just helps to kind of know, hey, I want to get in the operations field. I just don't know what, or, you know, I want to be in the IT field. This is my background. So just kind of that basic information. Mm -hmm. That is words of wisdom. So please, all my transitioning military, military spouses, as you're reaching out to recruiters, they are busy people. They need to know very specific information. So if you just say, hey, Katie, um, this is Kim. What kind of jobs do you have available? That's not helpful. <laughs> so be very specific. Because it's not always what you want to do. So, yeah. Yep. So I encourage everyone to go to Kim's LinkedIn and look at that post because that's going to be very, very helpful. Um, uh, you had touched on something about compensation. When I was looking at some jobs, I saw more on the salary positions that pay range was on there. Is that pretty typical to have pay ranges already posted? Um, mm -hmm. Or is that just specific to certain positions? Sure. So it's actually specific to certain locations. So legally, we're required to post in certain locations, the salary range offered for the position. Uh, you can do a lot of Google searches, you can do a lot of glass door looking. Um, those are not accurate ranges. Those are submitted by other people, not necessarily what we're paying. And we we look at compensation as a whole. Um, and, and we also look at compensation frequently and, and adjust as needed. So um, so it's really not accurate. 
do I want us to be able to be very clear with pay? Yes. And so we will have those conversations after application. Um, and it is usually one of our job screening questions as well. So that is one of the ones that we might review it. And if the position pays, you know, I'll, I can only speak from hourly associates right now, but uh, if the position pays 22 an hour and you want 45 an hour, I am not going to message you um, because it's just not unrealistic to meet that expectation and even find a, a common ground. A lot of our hourly rules are set pay. We cannot adjust and, and negotiate pay. Um, but again, that's, um, again, those are things we'll talk about um, and be very clear through the process. They're just not listed on every job application yet. Yeah, and I, again, like Kim said, um, that question is listed in there when you apply. And I'll reach out a lot of times if, you know, the question typically says, like, what is your total compensation, you know, requirements? Um, so I'll look at that. And if if it's kind of close or I'm not too sure, like, we want to be transparent on the front end. We don't want to get you all the way through the process and then be shocked. Like, oh, this only pays, you know, $20 an hour. And I was looking for $80,000. Um, you know, we, we don't want to set you up for failure or surprise you. So I typically will send an email like, hey, I noticed this in your application. You look great for the role, but, um, you know, this is kind of what the compensation range may be, or I'm a little worried it may not meet, um, you know, and then kind of like Ken said, have that conversation, make it on the phone with you and kind of talk through it. Um, again, when she said we look at comp holistically, that also includes, you know, sign on bonuses um, where it can kind of make up for maybe the hourly pay isn't what you want, but there's a sign on bonus or what we have, you know, the restricted stock units. So when we look at it as a whole, that's kind of what we mean. Um, but like she said, we we're pretty transparent um, on the front end, Agreed. even though it may not be listed in the job description. Yeah. Thank you. And I think everyone appreciates that transparency. So it's really great to know. Um, I have one final question that's tied to something that's in the chat box. So we are just about out of time, but I want to talk about um, relocation twofold. So let's say we have a veteran transitioning service member who needs to relocate. How quickly um, do they need to do that typically? Because right, they need some lead time to get to the new location. So can you talk on the military, so active duty transitioning veteran side, but then also can you touch on as military spouses, if you're a current Amazonian and UPCS, what happens with that kind of re relocation? Can you talk about both sides? Sure, uh, a little bit on both. So first, if you're active duty and you're transitioning, again, that application window stays the same about 60 days out, right? Um, and so if your relocation is going to be within that 60 day, we might delay start until you're, you're in seat. Now, if the military is relocating you, um, but you can come early and your family falls behind, like there's so many variables there, right? Um, we can, we'll work with you, um, but we can't like delay by six months. We can probably delay by a few weeks or a month to give you that time. Uh, military spouses are a whole different ballgame. If the role is available for where you are PCSing, um, then we will absolutely work with you to make that um, to make that a priority to get you um, transitioned to the new site. Um, if an opening is available, we cannot create an opening for you, though, unfortunately. Um, but um, usually that with good performance and whatnot, it lends you well to be rehired so that if an opening were to reopen after you were already, you know, unfortunately had to give notice or whatever, we would we would absolutely welcome you back. Uh, we do a lot of, we call them boomerangs. We have a lot of Amazonians and we love seeing Amazonians that leave and come back because the grass isn't always greener on the other side. So. Yeah. Okay. I think covered it pretty well. <laughs> awesome. So I was thinking even, um, you know, the military spouse is on right now, or if I have any active duty and they have a spouse, right, as they're PCSing, great to pass on to your spouses as well if you are not a military spouse yourself. Um, so great. We are just about out of time. Um, I'm sure we can ask 20 more questions, um, mm -hmm. but unfortunately we're, we're out of time. So before I pull up the very last slide and do some wrap up, do either of you ladies have any final words of wisdom for our folks to end this call? I just have one that I noticed in the chat earlier was about virtual though. A lot of people are like, oh, I'll take this or virtual. I just wanna be very transparent. We have a return to office. And so virtual is just very select and very minimal as an option for any job. Um, and so, Unfortunately, you won't see that at Amazon like we did during the COVID uh, heightened COVID season. So um, we, the expectation is that we be in an office three days a week and home for two um, for anything outside of operations. Operations, you're on site. Um, mm -hmm. But corporate roles, if you're interested in those, um, you would have to live within a commutable distance to one of our headquarters. Yep. And then just my final words of wisdom. I know I didn't really mention in the beginning, but our entire team here is made up of veterans, um, you know, military spouses, current, former, 
We <laughs> all have been through it. Um, I remember like having trouble finding a meaningful career, being a military spouse. So if anything, just know that we are advocating for you. Um, we will help you however we can. So definitely take our, our contact information, reach out. Um, and again, we'll just keep in touch and uh, do whatever we can to help. Agreed. Awesome. Well, thank you both so much for your time. Um, Amazon is such a huge employer. Um, and knowing that there's a home for everyone, all the different types of positions is just fantastic. Um, so thank you for your time. Thank you for all of our participants for joining. Some final thoughts before we move on. We will have a poll that's going to launch. So before you head out, make sure you fill out those questions on the poll. Um, but next steps go to Amazon, right? We put in lots of links in the chat box about the military page, the job page. If you're more technically inclined, we even put the RME, the Reliance Maintenance and Engineering position link, lots of links in the chat box. Um, and then if you forget some of the things, a recording will come out uh, at a later point of this session. So you can always go back and watch the recording as well. So check out things all Amazon. While you're um, connecting with these lovely ladies on LinkedIn, also follow Heroes Make America while you're on there and connect with our Heroes Make America teammates um, and join future events, right? To so learn about additional companies. We have another Heroes Connect next week. We have LP Building Solutions next week, February 14th at three o'clock. And then don't forget, February 23rd is our virtual career fair. As part of your registration for that career fair, you can upload your resume and that goes to the registered employers, all 18 and then all the other ones that we're going to add between now and the career fair. So thank you all again for joining us today. We are out of time, so we will see you next week. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful day.